Hi there, Randy Green here. Continuing from the previous podcast, we are now going into the deeper investigations of the Majestic 12 document from FBI. And you should listen to the predispositions on the investigation of the Majestic 12 document, because that's very important. That explains you where I'm coming from, what my uh, goal of doing this is to a degree, and I want to uh, make that more clear in this podcast to begin with, why I am doing what I'm doing. Because it's not as much the topic itself that's of interest. It is the meta perspectives, which is a podcast I've done as well on the meta perspectives of energy and consciousness and the predispositions of how we work with this. And the most important thing that I want to put in here, because why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I'm teaching the higher order sciences and I can take any topic. I could have chosen to work with the Gospels or the um, the Hebrew Bible, which I might. Uh, I could choose to work with Dirac and his information, which I might, uh, Paul Dirac uh, and his way, version of working with the quantum sciences, which I might. That would be another way of doing psychic energetic investigation. Because what are the higher order sciences? That's what am I trying to teach here? I'm teaching the higher order sciences for the ones that effectively are seeking to expand their higher order capacities. So this is for the ones that have activated their inner sight and inner perception level where they can work with their expansion field and use that to uh, navigate and operate within other realms of our reality using the perception field to understand and interact with do either horizontal or um, vertical merging processes from where deeper levels of holographic information and content can be derived with the sole purpose of expanding, developing, and uh, make our energy systems more complex in the goal and aim of transforming energy, because that's the whole point. And I talk about that in the meta perspectives of energy and consciousness. We don't seek knowledge for knowledge itself. We seek knowledge to use it as a tool to expand our energy system, a holographic energy system, so that the uh, consciousness unit can grow in complexity using the different forms of energy that we have engaged ourselves with and in, and by that have adapted our overall energy system to run the frequency spectrum within this reality, but also the higher order types of energy spectra that will lead to the complexity rate that is needed for the higher standards and the highest progression rate. So these are very complex understandings of why we're doing it. And I'm teaching that in the whole transition sciences, which are nothing that you have encountered before, because there I put together parapsychology, parasciences, and the basic understanding of some of the original human humanoid programs that were operating inside our solar system as part of the restoration program to undo the effects of the timeline event that led to the inversion of genetics in the fifth dimension, as well as regression dynamics in the fourth cycle or the fifth, uh, the fourth uh, uh, dimension, if you like. I prefer to call them cycles. That's more accurate. The fifth cycle under the Syrian system and their races led to invertedness and connected them to the third cycle type of, of previous universal structure energies, as well as the regression of the different civilizations that were existing within what we call the LP of two band of reality, less progressive reality field two, or what others have talked about as the middle domain, which is also correct, from where their genetics began to regress into prior states of what they used to be and not what they actually had achieved through the different types of what we could call elevation programs within the LPU, the less progressive universal structure that we created for the purpose of existing some of the, the civilizations, the lineages that did not make it in the previous universal cycle, and by that already had an inbuilt flaw in their consciousness potentials. So this is, this is why I'm doing it. It's science, people. Nothing to do with spirituality, nothing to do with uh, the progression dynamics themselves and the way to progress ourselves means very little unless it's done in a context. And the context is here, the understanding of reality, so that we can interact with reality to the highest progression rate possible for ourselves, others, and the world that we are part of, transforming energy to the highest potential so that whoever and whatever will come after us will have the same possibilities we had to continue their evolutionary processes to become the highest version of what they can be as a civilization. So that's why we're doing this, people. 
So the higher order science is also for the ones getting ready to do the grand transition and move into the viable cycles of energy and consciousness. And these are the third cycle, fourth cycle, fifth cycle. These are the ones that are kind of, that's the old stuff where people are still lingering on. We should have moved into the fifth cycle by now, which we haven't because the prohibiting technologies and the way that the different groups that are coming in from the fourth cycle, the LPF2s, the, the regressed races, they are still lingering on and they are trying to hold our continued progression rate so that they will keep us within their cycles and their regressed dynamics and reality fields and adhere to their different types of technologies and programs from where they can continue their own existence. So that's what we are up against here. And that's been going on for eons lately with the full colonization 15,000 years ago. The big shift is 1950, we got races in here or aliens that do not belong here at all. And they have caused havoc and problems for all involved here, even the colonizing races. So that's why we now got factions that are dealing with or fighting factions, which we didn't have uh, prior to that, because then it was kind of all under a specific group uh, of what we would call 10th dimensional or the ones that came from the D10 collective. And these collectives were hereby talking about different civilizations that work in different schemes. We could also call it the sector of which some of the aggressive races that were part of the 410 pillar, they are at the highest level of operating within these sectors and working their way from what they would see as the 10th level of their pillar project going down to the fourth cycle from where they expanded their uh, reality genetics and possibilities of existence into the highest level possible, which by others have been coined the 10th dimension. But it is a specific quadrant in the sky of which we know the Draco system to be the prominent one that we see on the sky, even though that type of constellation is artificially made and has very little to do with the original one. That's technically just a bridge into this system. For the ones working towards an expanded reality living, perception skills, and timeline implementation processes. For the ones seeking to change status quo and recreate the original architecture of our reality field. So that's why I'm doing this. So the point is not what we're talking about. The point is how we talk about it. So that's very important to get that one under your skin so you understand. This is not about what we are talking about. It's about how we are talking about it, the meta perspectives of it, the dynamics of it, the methods, the mythology. How do we look it into it? How do we use our higher order uh, awareness? How do we use the psychic energetic properties? How do we do that to achieve the access point to the higher order sciences with the goal of reconstituting, recalibrating, and remembering the original sciences that our civilizations within this solar system used to utilize and were one of their top-notch people civilizations that did that. That's why we got the project, the pillar project up and running, and that's why it was positioned here and was positioned under the ancient one. So now we kind of got that one squared away, so you kind of know where I'm talking from, why I'm doing what I'm doing, and what the purpose is of this investigation. So when we do higher order sciences, it's never about the topic itself. That could be any topic. It's about the dynamics, it's about the mechanics, it's about how we do it, it's about the investigation into ourselves so we know why we're doing it, why we're committed to it, why we're engaging in it. We know our predispositions, we know where we're coming from, and with that we also understand that that will color what we will achieve unless we are observant of our motives of investigating it. So that's why I put this in. My motive is here not to prove a point because we can't, it's historical, we don't know, we weren't there, we have no idea, it's there, we don't know where it came from, apparently it was on the floor or it was delivered. We don't know from who, we don't know why, and we have no way to look into it, especially when say, well, if I look psychic energetically to do it, get anything, no, I get a blockage. So that's interesting in itself. Why is there blockage? But that blockage could both be distortion, but it could also be that there actually is nothing to it. 
that it's just some group of humans that decided that they wanted to create ripples in the shallow waters of the ones in 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 um, in office, the ones that were in in play. It said that it was in the beginning of uh, um, Eisenhower when he came into office. Was someone trying to push some buttons to make something work? Was it actually part of a slandering campaign? Was it as to try to say that that he knows or later on when he because some of the ones that were in the know of how timelines work and how things of reality dynamics work would know that he would later on come out with his very uh, famous uh, talk about the, uh, the warning about the military industrial complex and what was he actually referring to there was he just referring to uh, the 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 different programs that were coming by um Project Blue Book, I think it's called, or Paperclip, I can't remember uh, which one it was. The ones that were the the Nazi uh, scientists were were transported and came to the states and became part of uh, NASA's programs and were part of building the rockets that led to the landing on the moon. Uh, what are we talking about here? What what was the background of that one? And I will here, for the sake of it, read a little bit from uh, Wikipedia, and I put the link below. And I know everybody say, oh, Wikipedia. It's, it's like it got this bad rap, but it's not that bad always. It's a good place to begin. And then it's up to people to investigate the um, the sources of this and where they have got the information from uh, to, to figure out what is actually referred correctly. And I think that uh, to a large degree that Wikipedia has one of the things I really enjoy about Wikipedia is that you have all these links so you can investigate yourself and follow different trails. So it's a good platform. It's a hub to investigate further yourself. It's not a hub for the accurate information, but it's a hub for you to find a, a beginning point, a portfolio of information from where you can dig deeper. Of course, if you're going to do an official paper, you can't say, oh, I got this from Wikipedia, right? You have to go to the original sources, which is often linked below, and that's for you to look that up. So that's also part of the scientific method. You can't just rest upon what others say. You have to investigate the sources themselves, get to the real documents, look, have an eye on, and look at this and say, okay, what is this? How, how does that appear to me? And that, in that process, you must be completely clear of why you're doing it, what you're looking for, so that you know your own blind spots. Because this is one of the problems when we talk about uh, sciences themselves is that if you go in and you want to investigate something and you already have, whether it's conscious or subconscious, have an idea of what you want to achieve with that investigation, well, then you have whatever you will find will match these uh, subliminal ideas of what you want to achieve. And in that way, you are unwillingly and unknowingly pushing the inv investigation or the research in a direction that will just be what we could call, call confirm your already ideas of coming up with that suspicion. That's when we talk about this is why I find it a little bit ridiculous when we do scientific papers and we, <clears throat> we write the questions of what we want to investigate because by that question, we have already got the answer. We're just taking a lengthy process using a lot of other people to support our idea, which is for me a little bit kind of, yeah, why not just come forth right away and say, this is what we want to investigate. But that's the scientific mythology. And that's why I'm kind of a little bit, yeah, not so good at that one because what's the point? There are 10,000 other methods that are more that is just equally as good, but I understand the reason why, and I've got the method, and that's <clears throat> to try to make science objective, which from the lecture I will put below here as well, you know it's not possible because we are humans and we influence what we investigate. There's nothing as objectivity. There is always human approaches to things and what we want to prove. And the reason is why do we, we should look into why do we want to prove it? What is that we want to prove and why it's important for us to prove that? So, and for many that are doing these sciences within the general community, they are under different kinds of limitations of which one is money, which one is that you need to create a name for yourself to get a tenureship, a tenureship, and these kind of things. So, so there are good reasons why people do what they're doing. So we have got none 
non-objectivity in anything. That's why we might as well just throw it in and say, okay, let's be authentic about this. Be honest about this. What are we dealing with here? And then also look into the psychological side of it. Because that's part of when we talk about scientists, they have been, or scientists, they've been very much to not put in the personal aspect of it, trying very, very hard. And it's easy when you could do it evidence-based by machinery, hence also a way to do it very objective because it's the machines that calculates it. But if you're using a program, you have been part of engineering, well, then you have programmed it to do certain things. And by that, you're already influenced what you're trying to investigate. The program is not objective either. It's been created by humans and what they can and their capacities. So there is no objectivity. There's always some sort of influence. And that's also what the Schrodinger uncertainty principle comes in and say, well, if we, if we want the parts of stop particles to be waves, they become waves. If we want them to be particles, they become particles because we influence what we're looking at. And the science have come up and said, yeah, but that doesn't add up in the macro level. That's only on the micro level, uh, due to the technology, but it doesn't in the real world because everything works there under different laws. <laughs> <clears throat> the four laws, the four laws of uh, electromagnetism, you know, gravity, strong force, weak force. Uh, I forgot the last one, the ones that ties things together. I forgot that one. You can look up the four laws of electromagnetic systems. I will put a link there as well, because that's not where I want to go. I'm just putting in here that we have that clear understanding that what we look at is influenced by what we feel and what we think and who we are and what we know and what we don't know, our conscious and subconscious dynamics. And that's why true science can never be science in, in a manner of being completely objective. We need to understand who and what we are so we know where we're coming from and what we want to achieve and be honest about that. And what do I want to achieve here? I want to achieve here to teach you how you can work with information in a different way so that you can come to different conclusions that will lead to an inner outer psychological expansion process that will grant you the ability to begin to remember who and what you truly are and not what you've been brainwashed to believe you are. So no more than that. So I'm not here to prove or, or anything because as I said, there's a lot of good people already done that. So the, the whole point of the FBI, I'm reading here from Wikipedia, began its own investigation of the supposed secret documents and quickly formed doubts as to their authenticity. Of course, we know, completely bogus. Later in 1996, a document called the MTA-12 Special Operations Manual circulated, circulated among uh, ufologists. It is also widely considered to be a fake and a continuation of the MTA-12 myth. So we have ufologists, uh, I don't know if she wants to be called that, but Linda Moulton Hove, Hove and, sorry for not pronouncing it correctly, I know how it's supposed to sound in my head, but I am apparently not doing it correctly. Linda Moulton Hove and Stanton T. Friedman believe the MD-12 documents to be authentic. That's the, some of the things I referred to in the History Channel. Friedman examined the documents and argued that the United States government had has conspired to cover up knowledge of Christ extraterrestrial spacecrafts. So anyway, so so this is just uh, going into there. There are skeptics. They're the ones that are pro and the ones that are against. That I'll try to see if I can find that from history channels because I actually came ac across it the other day. Because this is how it works when you, uh, at least it works for me. When I begin to investigate something, I push forth a type of energy. I push it out as a wave. That's why I use my expansion field. And I put up feelers and say, okay, drum up all the information I need to know so I get the understanding of what's going on here. And then it represents itself on, um, I look up specific words. I get the words in my mind. This is the words you need to look up. I look it up uh, on, on Chrome. I use Google. You could use any search engine you like. Um, and then it comes up, even though that some of the search engines actually are coming up with different results, uh, which is important because Google is a very very old heavy one that's why I like to use it because it's been there for a very long time so that means it has deeper layers from where I can dug up information where some of the newer search engines are either connected to Mac or they are connected to some other kind of operating system Apple for instance Mac and Apple same uh, so, so there are different browsers that work with that we also know that Explorer works with Microsoft 
And we also know that the different companies have bought each other up, but that's not the case. The case is here that the different search engines have different layers that goes on different levels of the net. And I'm here talking about the implemented virtual reality net that, that runs through different types of algorithms that are connected to alien technology. We also have different forms of algorithms that are connected to the general level within the base program that runs on what we call, for instance, uh, which I haven't investigated further, but there is this uh, program that many scientists are now using, Python. And I know that's all bells ring. I've not investigated yet because I kind of know if I do, I probably get my my ribs, uh, my, my wrist slaps for that one. So I'm just keeping it. But I know that's an alien program that's put in to connect to the parallel universal matrix races. How do I know that? Because I look at that's what you train yourself to understand the origin of where these different technologies come from, where these different programs come from, who it's engineered for. Python is engineered to a specific group within the scientific community that has a specific type of in, uh, extraterrestrial genetics inserted into the human genome, whether they know of it or not. Mostly not knowing, because this is subliminal programs that are running, that are orienting them in different directions, which is the same method I'm using here. They just don't know of it. So this is why we again understand, okay, how do we work with energy and how do we use search engines and how do you use the information flow that we can get access to? And we, as we have just learned here via the Schroeder uh, uh, uncertainty principle that we affect the energy that we are operating with inside this reality, we do understand that. We also understand that it takes a higher quantum energy Again, quantum principles, a higher quanta of energy, because quanta and quantum means a package of energy. It takes a higher amount of energy to be able to really push forth the, the frequency energies via the dynamics I just told you of how protons, electrons, and neutrons are working together. And the neutron is to connect to the quantum field. So you have to kind of have access to the neutron field yourself, the point zero, that you can only have access to if you have breached through the frequency layers that are controlling your frequency patterns that are part of your brain. So your brain needs to be operated and work within a new neural network that goes beyond the traditional neural networks that are connected to the limbic system and the instinctual layers and pawns in your central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. These needs to be upgraded so yet that your brain works on different types of neural networks. And that's part of the clearing process. You go in and do the psychological processes to clear up the limbic system, the right hemisphere, as well as some of the hypothalamus dynamics that controls the frontal lobes. That's part of, you can either use mindfulness or whatever, that's the higher order density one work. And that's the one I'm doing there with the power of psychology going and say, looking at this differently. It's nothing to do with the old traditional ways of using the chakra system to ignite that. I work my way through that to clear out the chakra system, but that's not the reason why that I've got the activate, activation potentials I have. I cleared out the chakra system and the dynamics of it, leading it to the completion so I could fulfill that prohibiting program because that is what the chakra system is. It was not originally that by the Brahims that came from Atlantis, but it was turned into that. That was one of the systems that were taking under the colonizing races that traveled and took over the jurisdiction we now call India and by that time with the original chakra system. And because we have had all of this blend of different civilizations, well, some humans in the Western world have this in their energy field, especially if they had a previous incarnation being a, a human that were born in India and by that got that holographic architecture inserted into their uh, higher order type of energy system. And I know many of you will say, now my mind just blew. Yes, that's the whole point of this. I've been I've been dabbling around enough in the fall cycle trying to teach you these things. And I've been doing that for 15 years now. And now we need to move on if we are to get anywhere near where we need to go. And this is the whole point of this one, to show you where you need to go. And this will be difficult and you will have to struggle. And I remember when I began at the University of Copenhagen in 2010, how difficult it was for my brain to adapt to these new type of very schematically oriented scientific procedures because my right hemisphere was all over the place. But in that, I learned how to navigate through philosophy, through scientific mythology, through the studies, through the, the things I had to do, which was very difficult. And my left hemisphere was screaming, but I had already studied a lot of books without really understanding what I was reading. But I built in different forms of complexity patterns from where 
where my brain could begin to process that information. So in this work, we also need to know how the brain actually works, how it creates patterns. And these are the patterns of change, how it operates with how the neural networks build different complexity patterns from where there are different access points and nodal points from where holographic content can be inserted and by that create expansion of that specific type of neural network. But that's only possible if you train your brain to work with higher order sciences or scientific mythology in general. But the left hemisphere can only expand if the energies of the heart field works on a specific vibrational level that has cleared the limbic system, that has activated the different levels of the hypothalamus so that you begin to access your subconscious memory and your past life memories from where you get access to a broader understanding of who and what you are. You break down the limitations, the seals as they are called, in the three lower fields you have of this life and begin to merge them with who you have been in previous lifetimes. That's the first step that you need to break down and then clear the distortion of your past lives. That's the past life trauma and past life memories, which can be just as dreading as the psychological work you've done in this life. So that needs to be done first. And that tends more than 10 years to clear through this life and whatever you have got from this life. And it keeps popping up because nothing is ever fully completed. The complexity patterns, the emotional patterns are ingrained in our emotional field from this life and past life and beyond. And I talk about that in the whole transition science course material as well. So these are some of the things that we really need to look into from a different scientific perspective and understand this is not spirituality. This is understanding the engineering of our holographic architecture as well as how our brain works and operates. And as that, as we expand our left hemisphere to work beyond the geometry and the Pythagorean uh, complex system that he built in there, many of you that are tapping into a left hemisphere, you go in and the first thing you will begin to see is the ge geometrical patterns, which is also explained in the Alice Bay material. And that's because of the work that Pythagoras did. So in a way, it was instead of being something that I actually put there to assist humanity, it's now become a blockage because everything is now down to these geometrical patterns, right? It's in nature, it's everywhere, and it goes in with the Fibonacci uh, ratio and the golden ratio and all these kind of things. And then people get stuck. There's another rabbit hole that's a prohibiting program. So we need to go beyond on that, break that down, learn the transmutation processes, and then begin to understand that the left hemisphere is connected to language, is connected to abstract understanding of concepts that can be put together in a pattern, whereas the right hemisphere work with the idea of creating unity of what we are investigating. So we need the two hemispheres to work together. And that's where I am. My brain itself told me how I could unify my left and right hemisphere. And that I did as well with my psychological work, with my clearing work, with my inner work, with my meditation work, with my studies of complex sciences. That's where I know with the Dirac and the fifth dimension, I might go back into that one. Did I understand the equations? Not at all, because I understand these equations. They are just symbols like the Pythagorean mathematical symbols. They are put in there using Greek symbols that ties us into some of the early brotherhoods of which Pythagoras was the founder that leads to a specific type of understanding of the frequency spectrum that ties us into symbols that are used to primarily by the Syrian bees that leads to different crystallizations of our progression dynamics. So hence, not the way I wanted to go around this, but I was taught that through the study, so I understood that. And at the same time, also going beyond what was said, the language and going into the ideas, the concepts, the systems of thought, the constructions of mind, understanding how the mind works. And why is that important? Because males are very controlled or limited by their left hemisphere and these crystalline processes of mind within the five mental uh, uh, capacities that is explained via the Buddhist teaching system that goes back to some of the original uh, white Syrian elder races, which I also talk about in some of my material and my take on Buddhism, for instance. That's why that was important. Why did I take, do the, my take on the chakra system? Because these are systems that were put in. For some, it was expanding. For others, it was limiting. 
So that's also to be put into that one when we talk about these concepts and how we get there and why we're doing what we're doing and why it takes such an enormous amount of time. And that's why we have to the correct commitment of what we're doing. And my commitment is not to get lost in the details as in not being able to see the forest for the trees, but to be able to go into the forest and say, how does the forest work? And then dive into specifics from where I can expand my perception field to work with more complex information systems with the sole purpose of clearing my original holographic structure so that I'm not seeking the quote-unquote base program truth so I can prove a point, which would just create another solidification pattern in my mental capacities, which goes through the mental field, the five layers around the mental field goes through the left hemisphere, goes through scientific approach. Whereas the heart energy, the heart field, the limbic system, the development of the limbic system into the frontal lobes, which many do not succeed succeed very well when they go from the teens and into adulthood, are connected to the emotional field, it's connected to the childhood patterns, it's connected to past life trauma, it's connected to the fetal pattern that we've got from mom and dad and their joint emotional fields when they were having sex. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in us and that's what we need to know. And that's part of the higher order density one reconfiguration work that we begin to understand who we are and what we are made of. And that's where, when we talk about, is my teaching similar to what's been out there? No, it's completely different. Just putting that one in there as well. So, so with that, we also have the understanding that when we begin this work and when we look into uh, using our psychic energetic abilities, it is highly reliant on how far we have got in our own developmental processes of our holographic energy system. It depends on our architecture originally, where we were, where, where we come from. Are we humans? Are we humanoids? Which one of the sectors do we come from? How do we get here? I talk about that, some of the things that I look into if it's possible for me to see as part of the uh, whole uh, energy system assessment, which I the old days called a template reading, which I shut down because that that has changed. And now I'm all looking into, okay, what's left? Because the groups that were there, that were part of the template reading sciences, they are long gone. That was part of the attempt to activate humanity to get out of the colonization programs because... <clears throat> In 2016, the original uh, um, plasma crystals that are upholding the prohibiting technologies or part of the original project began to collapse. And with that, uh, forced some of the races that have been on the top of the colonization programs to leave our um, field. And by that, under the law of the rules of engagement, were to give people the ability to reconstitute themselves and get out of some of these old programs and contracts that they have been put under as part of the colonization 15,000 years ago, which did not lead too much just put it in there so when we are saying okay when we're looking into the understanding of the different factions and we then say okay we have the ones that were leaving in they were already knowing that this was going wrong in the in the 40s because we already had the breakdown there that goes into some of the, in modern history, you have the, the Churchill little uh, vision there where some of the activation processes were shut down um, due to the not responding well to the knowledge at the time. So that again could go in and say, okay, we have the colonizing factions that are into that by the law are actually supposed to uh, activate and awaken humanity, which they've been trying to do with some of their very vague spiritual programs, which is just let down another rabbit hole. Most of these programs are now taken over by the Niborian scavengers and other groups that are aligned with the new Niborian factions from parallel systems. So, so no, that's also why I've done this uh, on the chakra system and what have you to, to try and show people this is about time you find another method and this is where I come in this is giving an opportunity to approach all of these things from a different angle that has the original purpose of activating our energy system so we remember and come in contact with our original higher order uh, holographic energy architecture so that's the whole point but at the same time we're also having all of these um, opportunities that we need to figure out okay which one is most uh, adaptable and suitable for my energy system and in the end you don't need anyone to teach you anything you know that if you understand the dynamics and the, the mechanics of how energy work in, inside the reality as well as inside yourself, how you can go into the meta perspective of working with the different types of sciences. So that's the purpose of why I'm doing this, so that you learn how to do this, not that you rest upon my answers, but that you learn how to do this yourself. 
because you need these dynamics when you go in and work with your holographic architect. And when you begin to weed through the timelines, you need this scientific approach to go in and investigate and research and look behind the distortion, what's there and not just what presents itself, because there's a lot of visions implemented into the old quote-unquote activation programs under the old world order. These are called initiation programs as the Baylor materials show. That's why I worked my way through that to show and see, okay, these were that programs and they take down the cubes and whatever that was connected to my energy system. So I worked my way through it to dissolve it and clear myself of it, not to activate it or become part of it. And that's the way I'm working with this material as well, because I investigated as the beginning of my awakening journey. And that led me through, <laughs> into a lot of other types of programs, which I'm now trying to get out of. And in that process, I'm here giving you my knowledge of what I have understood from here. And then my goal of this is to leave it behind and not lingering on, similar to my take on Buddhism. So I got rid of that one because I was I studied uh, Buddhism in, in, in a slightly easy manner in college. Uh, and I had a, a kind of a huge thing going on uh, and an exam at college that kind of defined, it was a defining moment that l was left lingering in my field that I knew something that, that I was not able to verbalize. And then I began my studies using a few books and then a Wikipedia and then do the psychic and energetic research and looking into, okay, where do I know this? What is it that I know? Because I knew others wouldn't give it to me, but I needed to find the level where I understood what that was and that was why I did my take on Buddhism which led to an opening where I worked with some uh, avian genetics that was then released within that system of thought that was inaccurate and that also led me to the understanding that I can't study Buddhism as it is out there first of all it's a language I don't understand and secondly I, I can't join these ideas because they are not what I have taught and then the question comes okay then what have I been taught and that's some of the um High Order Density One Work Institute YouTube channel. I put one up there uh, in on the uh, the depth of mindfulness in the um, the practice of being mind. Uh, what do you call it? Um, harmless. So I put a podcast out there where I show you how I work with some of my past life memories. So all of this work is a huge dedication. So it's a lifestyle. Okay. So what I'm trying to share with you here is not answers. It's methods dynamics and methods so that you can learn it to do it yourself. Because the point is, we don't want more followers. We need people that are actively, scientifically able to work with information and use their expanded perception field as well as their higher order uh, capacities to research and understand what reality is. So we get as close as possible to the understand that we work with science and reality to build our energy system and reconfigure it and upgrade it to its highest potential potentiality so that we can reach the highest progression rate that is possible to do the elevation of the cycles, which is part of the new grand cycle dynamics that are running inside our reality right now. So we reach the fifth cycle to the degree that is possible, or at least complete the fourth cycle, which is why I created the progression sciences that are part of the whole academy for those of you who want to do the fast track on that one and what you need to learn there. Not that it will give you the answers, but it will give you the dynamics, it will give you the methods, and then it's all up to you how you investigate that and use that as part of your everyday clearing work. Okay, so the first part of that Majestic 12 document is the first thing where, where I go in and say, I have got some inside information already that uh, there were a point, for me, the information I've got, there was a group that was called Majestic 12, whether it's called Majestic 12 or Magic 12, that's the big question. And when I get further down in the document, there is this little play on, is it called magic or majestic? You can see top secret slash magic eyes only. And then you have the other one that kind of says majestic 12 in the beginning. So what is it? Is it magic or is it majestic? There's, there's something there. I don't know what it is, but that's the first nodal point I get. There's something there. And the, when I investigate it further, I get that ma magic 12 is actually connected to some of the brotherhoods. So that's the esoteric or the secret level of it, where the majestic 12 is the outer domain 
base program version of it. So when people talk about Majestic 12, they will be led to the programs that are engineered and inserted into our reality field that are connected to the Majestic 12, where they will go to dead ends and rabbit holes. Whereas if you look at the Magic 12, well, then you will be, go deeper into the understanding, okay, this is brotherhood. And which faction are we talking about? Why did they want to come with this? Most of the ones that were part of these programs, they are dead now. So we don't know. Unless, of course, I do some kind of research and drum up and say, are there any one of the original 13 lineages that were part of the brotherhoods at the time, left-wing brotherhoods, that want to be a whistleblower and come up and give some information here? But the information has already been given. It was part of this hybrid project that was part of Noah and the left-wing brothers to create this kind of new type of human that would make it into the fourth dimension. So I kind of already covered it in the Souls of Humanity. The names that are given here, uh, I looked into their names. You can look it up on Wikipedia. They have uh, nicely given links to all of these 12 people. And you can look up what they are of different scientists and what have you, alleged members. You can look at them and click up and, and uh, see what they were. And the idea is correct that it was uh, the ones that were chosen from the 13 lineages, which are the power lineages of the elite inside this reality that are part of that secret program we call Majek, Magic 12. They, the inner program, the outer program, Majestic 12, the inner program, Magic 12. The outer program, Majestic 12, did have affiliations within military uh, what projects which were kind of called private contractors. They were given information there. They were being given handovers that they would work with scientifically uh, in some of the programs or projects as we also, Bob Lazar talks about, that's some of the outer ones within this private contractors that would get the information from uh, people that would come and give it to them in, in uh, envelopes that would be brought to them by mail. They would never know who actually sent it to them. And the ones that, that operate that with the inner group that's called Magic 12. And there's a reason why it's called Magic 12 like that one. It goes back to Atlantis, but it also ties into the, the Giza complex. So we're having two groups within the Magic 12 of the 13 lineages that join together to create a group that would work with the new extraterrestrial species that were coming in. So that's the whole plot. This group is working with the new groups that came in, not the original colonizer races. And hence, in my perspective, the big secrecy, because they were going up against the collective, the D10 collective species and races of which we know a prominent one we call the Dracos. Duh. So kind of had to be great secrecy. Would they then leave a paper trail that will lead back to them and give this information? No. So what is here? Perhaps it's a whistleblower that actually wants to out them and say, give the, the direction to, because what is FBI? Which factions are behind FBI? Which factions are behind the different groups within the Air Force and onward and so forth? Which kind of uh, colonizing um, factions are behind these programs and these outer base programs? program uh, institutions are uh, not Again, people don't know this is going on on their subliminal levels of their existence. Most people don't know any of this. They have got no contact to it, but it's still uh, going on in the artificial fourth. And there are still operators inside this reality. There are still information sources that are being given to different variations in different forms, including subliminal coding during nighttime. There's a plenty of ways that they can give this information. They don't have to drop a piece of paper on the floor. Unless, of course, there is some kind of factional infight going on here, and then that rings more true to me. Why put these different names? Well, my best guess is, except from his actually are living, real living human beings, that most of them are part of the left wing brotherhood. Uh, could uh, also be seen as there are some interesting names there that goes in. My best guess is when we go into this one, these lineages are, some of them are tied to, uh, again, I need to be on top of that project, what is called the ones where they're brought in different scientists from uh, Germany to America. And some of the ones that came here as the original immigrants that left Europe, part of the original versions of the brotherhoods that also there got in infight over the course of magic um, and the use of magic. And we are here talking about genuine magic that goes back to Atlantis, hence magic 12. So it's tied into the understanding of the outer majestic as in trying to create a dominion, some kind of the majesty, some kind of 
a new overlord overseeing program. That is what I get from it. And then we had the inner group Magic 12 that were working through other different forms, including the MK Ultra program that probably came from that group as well, with these different ways of trying to create new mind altering techniques from where they could get access point into different groups of within the brotherhoods that were where their uh, higher order type of genetics were had reached a level of regression that shortly or very close it would go into inversion and by that become part of the artificial fifth uh, uh, domains under the dark ones so that's that was not interest that was not of their interest hence the attempt to divert it and that's the main reason why they decided to work with the new uh, grace uh, graces new races that came in from parallel universal matrices as an attempt to upgrade and update their uh, falling and uh, inverting in the process of inverting lineages and their uh, original genomes that is connected in the, the operators inside this reality by the mitochondria the maternal lineages, as well as part of what we call the holographic architecture behind. And since the reality programs that were part of the colonizing programs were already in the process of breaking down, it already was back in 15,000 years ago, it was just extended by the, the groups of the D10 collective, and they were completely coming in on false pretense. Anyways, that's another story. Well, then we have this, again, repeat of history, because they did learn it back then, and they're still not learning it. Plus, the left-wing brotherhood and these groups of the Giza complex and what have you, these 13 lineages, they were the ones that originally participated in the colonization, were given different types of jurisdictions, hence the 13 lineages, the, the elite that has this jurisdiction inside this reality operating inside and outside the reality programs being the administrators of this, the controllers of this, which again also led to their wrongful use of it because they got a little bit too eager in the hedonic processes and got a little bit too eager in gaining power. Why was that? Because these lineages and these groups that came here as part of the colonizing races were primarily infused with what we call insectoid and avian and lower types of reptoid types of genetics. Even though they are not looking like reptilians, they're not looking like avians, they're not looking like insects. Well, eventually they do become looking what they are, or at least in the artificial fourth, where they can't be bothered on trying to create a holographic overlay where they present themselves to be the original type of humanoid that are very human looking, but not really as humans, as we know from the different myths that we have of the indigenous people of Australia, that humans came from the sky, they looked, they were human-like. We have it from the Mesopotamian myths under the Niburian projects, human-like. So these are the humanoids. Okay, so we're here. So that's kind of how I want to put it this. These 13, 12 people that have been appointed here, no, but they are, there are a significant energy course that, that ties into some of the projects that they came to this reality field under. So they're kind of, uh, they're real persons, but the, the code there is, their lineage, their genetic composition, who they are and what they're working with and where they originally came from. So this is another typical way of outing a different groups so that that would be investigated. So these 12 people would be pulled in and they would be looked into what programs are they a part of and, and what are they get of a subliminal coding, what is leading to their new investigations, what are they trying to seed into the base program, what is the alterations they're trying to do the base program, what is the what are they trying to actually achieve with these new sciences that they're trying to implement as part of the base program. And then the other group that are now working with the new incoming races to try and create a completely different type of science, which also has had to be highly controlled within these secret programs that were not having human operators inside this reality because the parallel universal matrix races do not use human operators. They don't need, they use androids. So that's where the pieces of the puzzle will begin to fall together. So that is kind of where I want to push this one. The rest is for you to investigate because I'm, I, I won't go follow, further following down that one. But that's my take on why that is and why that document has been put in there. For me, it's a targeted document that is for when it says eyes only. And that's the whole point. Ma magic, eyes only. It's a signal. It's a, we're on to you. We know what you're doing. We know what you're working with these different programs. You know, we know you that you are beginning to work with these parallel universal matrices. We know you're trying to reverse engineer their crafts. We know you're trying to operate the human genome using the genetics from these races. We know about your hybrid projects. 
the secret private contractor military projects. We know what you're achieving to do, trying to achieve, and we know the reasons why you're doing it. So the question is, who's sending that warning? That's the one that's being blocked for me. And that's the interesting part because the other one has been given clearly. And then you can also say, well, that information you're given, Randy, that could be deception. Absolutely. And that's when we do these investigations. We really never know what we're up against and the level of deception, the level of interception, and the level of manipulation that is within this game. And that's part of the mythology as well. That's the high stake game that we're in when we talk about these different groups that are here. We're talking about technology that is capable of working holographically, intersecting with reality. We're talking about technology that holographically able to intersect with human genome. We're talking about technology that are able to holographically intersect with the human neural network, with our fields, with everything we are, altering to their enjoyment or their pleasure or their goals or their whatever they want to achieve with it. We are in a very high state game when we talk about why it's important to learn to do the clearing work because of these insertions, because of these manipulations, because of this interception. The goal of our clearing work is not to achieve alone the high progression rate. It is also to administer whatever is constantly being done to us so we at least have a minimum ability to work with our own energy fields in a manner that we choose and not what is chosen for us. And for me, that's the greatest takeaway here. And that's actually why I wanted to put out there using the Majestic 12 document as a means to give you this information. Thank you.